One, two, one, two, three, four. Happy Monday and welcome to the vlog. So this week we've got a lot going on. Uh, this should be a fun one. In terms of work, we cracked what the problem was in the last episode and I'll tell you about that later in the week. Um, the other thing that I'm doing this week is I am trying to write chapter three of my thesis, which is my theory chapter. So actually sort of trying to contribute to human knowledge, which is scary. So apart from the work uh, and all the other stuff that you normally get in these vlogs, like the music and me talking about my research, and I want to do talk uh, a bit more about some of the science that's going into my thesis. There's two things that you should keep watching for this week. Firstly, we've got something very special planned for tomorrow. And secondly, a parent's coming down this weekend, which means that I'm, we're going on a little road trip somewhere quite interesting. There, incentive. You've got to keep watching now. Sometimes you're in a music room that's meant for four people, and one piano isn't enough, so they give you two mini grands. So this week, as every week, I'm singing with the University Chapel Choir, except this week it is kind of unusual. Um, normally we do an even song every Wednesday. Um, incidentally, I'm going to put this in big letters on the screen. You don't have to be Christian to come to a service. It'd be really great to see some of you there. I know loads of people are next to watch these vlogs, so come along. There's, like, uh, there's a link down there to the Facebook for the Chapel Choir. Literally, just view it as like a free concert that's like an hour long every week. Uh, you don't have to be religious. If you want to come and sit at the back, no one's going to harass you. You can just sit and enjoy the music. Lots of people already do that. It's absolutely fine. There's even seating for people that if you just want to sneak in and sit at the back, it's more than fine. It'd be really great to see some people there, especially because the music uh, at this time of year is my favourite kind of music. We are moving into Lent. So this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, which means it's uh, the start 40 days um, in the Christian calendar of Lent. We actually get to sing a different style of music. Um, normally in the chapel choir we sing kind of a range of everything, but generally speaking 19th and 20th century music. In Lent we sing older stuff, much older stuff. This week we are doing two really famous, at least for choral singers, uh, pieces. We're doing the Mass for Four Voices by William Byrd, which is Elizabethan, so 16th century, and another 16th century piece, The Miserere Me Deus by Gregorio Allegri. If you think you don't know this piece, you do. So that's what we've got to look forward to this week. We are shifting back a couple of centuries, um, and the music is a very different style. Hopefully, I'm going to be including a recording at the end of the vlog, um, which I'd like to become a tradition, by the way, um, of one of these pieces. It's probably going to be part of the bird four part. So, I'll see what I can do. Good. I, I got lots of work done. Um, chapter three of my thesis is looking in pretty decent shape. The, there's sections that just didn't really hang together at all until today. So the code that I wrote uh, last week is still running, so it's still doing its job, which I'll probably finish on Wednesday. So that's chugging away. I had a good singing practice. I managed to watch live stream all day whilst I was working. Re I petted a cat. Today's just been really good. I mean, it's almost difficult to make content about this because I can't complain about anything. Now, I want to talk about tomorrow, because I've said this before, I am not a very smart person. Occasionally, I have really stupid ideas. Now, sometimes, my friends indulge me in these really stupid ideas. Tomorrow is one of those cases. And you know, I'm just going to hand over tomorrow to Dan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the base one beer mile here at Powderham Crescent. The rules are very simple. Competitors must run a mile consisting of eight laps around Powderham Crescent. However, this is far from a simple one mile sprint. Every quarter mile, competitors must drink a full can of beer. The winner is the person who can run a mile and drink four beers the fastest, without throwing up. But who is brave enough to attempt such a dangerous challenge? Let's meet our competitors. Hugo, the youth of the group, age 19, old Herovian, a weakness for toilet doors, none on the course today, so he should be in fine shape. Simon, our age, well who can guess, strength YouTube of course, sub 70,000, a weakness for carbs, has he consumed any, we'll soon see in the Chunder Analytics. And Corin, age 20, cheekbones you could cut yourself on, uh, you might remember how handsome he is of his course's weakness, and a number of kings three is the solo of choice. Let's have a look at the odds. 
Hugo, poor fitness of course, coming through in the odds being reflected today, sitting uh, at a poor 8-1. to one. Simon, our veteran, sitting quite comfortably actually at a 5-1. to one. Corin, 20, a late show of betting, 3-1. to one. Will he be able to appease the fans? Right then, here we are. It's a bit windy, a bit of rain this morning, so it's slightly damp underfoot, but that should be alright. Hugo prefers it slightly moist. We're going to be starting very soon. Our gents have warmed up and we think they're ready. Are they going to handle it? We're going to have to find out. Gents, if you're ready, three, two, one, and we're away. Strong start from all. Hugo's looking well. Simon's maintaining strong. Hugo, oh no, Corin looking remarkably calm. We're going, oh, we have to have a break. Simon's pushing on. He's ready. A little bit of spillage. Spillage is, of course, leakage, as we know. And I believe that's off. That's Hugo, and he's away. He's away, first track. Simon, he's away again. Corin, he's, he's slow and steady, wins the race. It's, it's a beer mile. Simon starting strong. Corin coming up in the rear. And we're off again. Second lap, second lap of eight, of course. Beautiful day for it, of course. Many spectators here this morning. It's a beautiful morning at uh, Powder and Crescent. Simon leading the group. Corin has jumped in front of Hugo in an interesting turn of events. Will he be able to maintain it? We're going to have to wait and see. We're coming up. Sec second beer's in. We're all taking some breathers. Hugo's looking quite strong, a bit sweaty. Lovely. Just a picture of perfection there. How are we feeling about that record, uh, Simon? I don't think four minutes is it, <laughs> is it Is it drifting further and further away? Corin, you're looking remarkably composed. How, how are you feeling? Well, I, I feel without the beer, it will be okay. Okay. But with, but with beer, it's looking very unlikely that I will course, come out a, trumps. With a, with a beer mile, um, kind I mean, of essential beer, to I mean, have I mean, beer. It's, it's kind of yeah, okay. Yeah, so. Well, you're all looking good. You're all looking good. Well, are you guys not happy? Hugo. He's going quickly and he's off. Beautiful form. Look at him. It's the fizz. Have you degassed, Corin? Do do remember to, to degas, otherwise that compression sickness will hit you hard. Oh, there's a car. No, that's all right. It's the taking part that counts. Slow and steady wins the proverbial race. Look at those tits. Soaring, you're doing particularly well. I'm, uh, I'm very impressed. Salmon Boy pulls up to make a start. You've got plenty of time. Time is very much on your side. On to the third. You're looking very well. How are you feeling, Hugo? How, how's how's things going? Wide. Fitness wise. Woohoo! Oh boy. Fair play, fair play. And that's Simon in. And Corin, he's made up quite spectacular time. Of course, we must remember, ladies and gentlemen, that Hugo had an interesting training tactic today in that he hasn't consumed any food, pretty much at all. So it's all, it's all going to be churning, I think. That's Hugo down. Top form. That's Simon. Simon's away. Third beer down. Corin again, maintaining his cool, calm, collected composure. Still going. I think if I drink any faster, I will, I will bomb. Hugo's coming in. I really did not think he'd be doing this well. Really, but I mean, Simon hasn't even rounded the corner. Oh no, here he comes. And it's Flippers. Flippers closing on the hairpin bend. He's looking good. Look at him, he's flapping away, flapping away. And here comes Hugo. Always, always slowing. He's not looking too crash hot. I would tell you to hurry up and... Can you, really? Oh, Clark is very much on the tail. He's, he's coming through now. Just beautiful. It's a beautiful display of manhood on, on today's show. 
Corrin, you're not looking too crash hot. I'm not going to uh, sugarcoat it. Should we get the ambulance ready? I'm feeling great. I recommend um, squatting just no. to, uh, to alleviate the problem. How about you bend over? How about you bend over? Hugo, we've learned not to do that around you. Hugo, this is, uh, this is on Sky, here on Sky Sports, we, uh, we, 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 can't, film, uh, we can't film that. Go on, Corin. Go on, Corin. Look at him, he's just so, he springs. He's like a woodland sprite. You can't let him win, Hugo. Hugo, you can't let him win, you can't let him win, Hugo. You can't run faster than him. You had been though. No, I hadn't. I'd just been drinking beer faster. Okay, right. Have we had a chunder on our hands, Corin? Are we close? Oh gosh. Oh no. This isn't. This isn't good. I think we might have a ch we might have a chunder on our hands, Simon. If so, I, I can recommend. I can recommend the the foliage. Or if you want a bit of privacy, there's a lovely Chanda Alley, and he's off. The eagle. And here he comes in. Of all our competitors, it's looking like it's going to be a photo finish. He comes in, checks in, stop the clock, and he's done. Marvellous display. Mr. Clark, let's join him on the course. How are you feeling? Oh, it took a lot of training. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who came out and supported me today. I mean, the years of drinking have really, they really aided me today. You're, you're very phlegmy. I am. I'm very gassy. Yeah. And here he comes. <laughs> and the crowd, the non-existent crowd, goes wild. The crowd surges backwards over the crash barriers. You guys are heroes. I think we're going to draw things to a close now here at Padron Crescent. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll see you very, very soon for some more antics. And that's when we have to have the really the cheesy outro of like... Da -da 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 -da. So this is how you do it. Take it long ways. As always. Either side. Bring it together. So it's like... Players. As, lo as much as you're trying to help, you're not helping. <laughs> so Tenor problems. Watch, watch the feet. I'm going to bring it in and trap the bottom with my foot like that. As always. And then... Oh. He's only gone and done it. The man is a genius. No, he's not. All right. Ready? We have now reached the stage called Der Flippen and Der Floppen by my dad. Go for it. No, okay. A full no, 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 go for it. Oh, it's not going. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I failed. No, it's a perfect flip. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Magic of editing. Can I do it again? Go for it. Yay! Hey! Oh shit! Oh no! Shh. It's pancake day, by the way. I feel like I should have prefaced this whole section by that. Incidentally, after the beer run, I'm, I'm quite drunk. <laughs> busy today. I want to point out a couple of things about yesterday. One, that was all done after work. I didn't just get smashed in the middle of the day. Two, uh, obviously it has nothing actually to do with Chapel Choir, so just my dumb idea. Three, it actually wasn't my dumb idea. Um, there's a website for it. For the people that are wondering why we did it, um, I found out about it and I thought it would be hilarious. Um, and not at all profoundly uncomfortable, which it was. Now, something which happened yesterday, which I didn't film, was that I took to the free of uh, some code. So I got sent some code from the University of Reading. Now, if you've been watching the vlog for a long time, you'll know that I had a problem for months with trying to invert PV. You can check all the videos for what that means. But basically, um, we tried, we, I wrote a thousand lines of Python and it just didn't work. So we decided that I was going to try and um, adapt somebody else's code. And so we got this code from Molly. And yesterday I looked through it and it's 8,000 lines of Fortran. And for those of you that code, it's not even indented. And all the variables have like two letter names. 
Obviously, I'm very grateful that I have it. But it's not easy to read. Now, I'm going to talk more in full about the science I'm doing and the coding that I'm doing tomorrow, because today I really want to talk about some history. As I already mentioned, one of the standout pieces we're doing today is Gregorio Allegri's setting of Psalm 51, um, Miserere May, and it's got a fascinating story behind it. There's actually a whole documentary about the piece, um, which I'll link down there. But the rub of it is that it was written for use in the Sistine Chapel, the chapel in Rome with the famous ceiling. Um, and it was deemed to be so beautiful that it wasn't ever allowed to leave. And that was the way it stayed for quite a while. Uh, official copies were released to a few very select people, but there was no broad release of the music until Mozart came along. Because Mozart came along and transcribed the whole thing from memory, having heard it once. Then went back and did some corrections. And then he passed it on to Mendelssohn, and now he passed it on to other people, and then we kind of have a modern version. That's a very short story. Do watch the rest of the documentary, because it's fascinating. How are you feeling today, champ? I'm actually not feeling too bad. Karen, how are you feeling? <laughs> It's very difficult to film because you do it in two choirs. There's a main choir and there's a semi chorus. Hey! <laughs> well done, Joe. Joe was one of the people in the semi chorus. Nailed it. <laughs> semi chorus? Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Becky was also in the semi chorus. <laughs> 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 Becky was my favourite in the semi chorus. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, she was great. She was really great. <laughs> was that your top two? <laughs> oh, they were great. They were very nice. <laughs> so something which I haven't mentioned is that it's called Ash Wednesday because you get ash administered to your forehead. Um, the idea is it's to do with um, like there's a, there's a verse bit of verse that I'll put up here because I'm not going to get it wrong. Basically, it's the fact that you come from dust. You're going to return to dust. Basically, you're mortal. So. If you're Christian, that makes you think that, well, you kind of repent of your sins. This is the second time I've tried to film this. I walked in on me in another bathroom. <laughs> Imagine trying to explain that. Now I'm heading back to the office just quickly for reasons that will become abundantly clear when I talk about my research woes tomorrow. Oh, sudden rainstorm. <laughs> Ow, my eye. Today, I want to talk about finite differencing. So last week, we were having this problem with an assumption that we were making in our code, and we think we've identified what it is, and it's to do with how I was testing that assumption, or more generally, how we were actually approaching the problem as a whole. What this comes down to is how we represent things that vary smoothly in the real world inside a computer. So you can have a graph of, say, uh, temperature, and this evolves over time. Then, you know, uh, over the course of a day, it might look something like that. Looks like a sine wave. The problem is that computers really struggle to represent smooth, continuous things because at the end of the day, when we measure this in real life, what we have is, say this is the course of a day, we'll have a measurement at midnight, no, that'd be like, uh, like 9am, then midnight, and then 9am again. Now if you had those four data points, then what this would look like inside the computer is like this. So instead of the smooth curve, you're left with just a really, a really boxy grid. Now let's say that instead of looking at the absolute value, so the actual temperature at a given time, we were interested in how quickly the temperature is changing. So if I pick a slightly simpler maybe, uh, let's say that temperatures increased and then they leveled off and then they sharply decreased. Then the rate of change of temperature in time, which is just a gradient differential, is given by this, this gradient here. Mathematically we can write that differential, the gradient, oh hello, we can write that differential as dt by dt, probably shouldn't appear temperature. And the technical definition of this is that it's temperature 
at a given point, let's say this is evaluated at, at, at time t, then that's temperature at time t plus delta t minus temperature at t over delta t in the limit the delta t goes to zero. So this is the mathematical definition, that as delta t gets infinitesimally small, basically it's, it's the closest to zero you can possibly get. This is the technical definition of the gradient. Now, when it comes to real data, when it comes to real data, we have to use what's called finite differencing. So we will say have two data points here. Let's say this is on, let's say this is over a couple of days. This is day number one, and this data point is day number two. The more you can say is that the gradient in the temperature, how quickly the temperature is changing over time, is given by here, dt by dt, and is equal to the temperature at day one minus the temperature at day two over the difference, which is one day. Now this works fine over here because we've got a straight line and it, moves, and it varies in a very uniform kind of way. However, once you get to somewhere like here, this starts to fall apart because the gradient at this point changes very quickly. And so if you only have daily data, then if you were to try and calculate the gradient using this resolution of data, what you get is a gradient looks like that, gradient looks like that, like that, and then like that. Whereas actually, the gradient here was basically the same as here, here the same as here, same as here, and then it suddenly decreased. And here, the gradient went really sharply negative. Now, by the limit of having daily resolution data, but basically not having a very coarse kind of view, you missed all of that variability. Well, basically our theory is that the polar region of the Earth is like a huge plunger, and that you have like a kind of piston almost at the top, which is pushing down on it. And that piston that's pushing down is mass. It's, it's air that's being pushed in. And as you get lots of air coming over the top, and through the walls of the piston, actually, then this, this sort of top of the piston gets pushed down and it gets compressed. What that means is then you see temperature and pressure anomalies in here, which is kind of easy to calculate. The assumption that I was testing was basically that the pressure change that you see within the piston, which is easy to calculate, um, matches up with the amount of air that you put in over the top and that comes in through the walls. And the problem was that it, they didn't match up. And that didn't make any sense, because we know those equations are like rock solid right. There's no way they could be wrong. It turned out that the problem I had was that I had pressure data for inside here, and I had mass flux data that was coming in at the side, but I only had them every day. And when you looked at, say, the mass flux on a, a given point, hang on, the mass of air that was being put across on a given day, uh, like a given height, looked something like this. Basically, with daily resolution, there's so much going on in here that you're missing if you just sample it every day. So I wasn't looking with a close enough resolution. The finite difference method that I was using, that we just talked about, wasn't accurate enough. So what we're trying to do to fix it is, um, I've been downloading over the past week, six hourly data. So data that's taken from satellites every six hours. And um, that means that I've downloaded 60 gigabytes of data, which caused problems of its own because the website was like, no. Nah. No, that's too much, you can't have that. So I've been downloading that data, I've been processing that data to put it in a form that I can use, um, and well, fingers crossed, um, in about two days, I think, Computer Code will have finished that will have tested how well that assumption works with slightly better resolution data. Any error by this point, we can just chalk up to interpolation errors, other, other science words. Now, from how many other YouTubers are you gonna get a lesson in maths and a beer mile, all in the same video? Unique content here on Simon Clark. That makes it sound like it's on my tummy. <laughs> the other thing I've been doing today is trying to unpick this Fortran code that I've been sent. And I, I genuinely feel like a caveman who's been given like an iPhone or something. And I'm just like taking it apart as carefully and meticulously as I can. Except I'm not because I'm, I'm not damaging it. I'm literally just like looking at it and trying to work out what each of the variables means, what all the subroutines do. Um, it's, it's like detective work. I've emailed the guy who sent it to me being like, okay, I think I've got the general gist, which is a half truth. Um, could you possibly like give me a brief overview of how you use it? Because 
So continuing to play detective, downloading new data, which means actually there's not a huge amount I can do right now. Um, so I'm leaving early to do a little bit of drone stuff and then it's time for chapel quite later. Today we're recording some of the Allegri which we performed yesterday, so hopefully I'll be including a little bit of that right now because it's a difficult piece to record with just one camera. You'll see why. We are also rolling, so... Yeah. What happened to your voice, Ed? Oh, it. It's a family-friendly show, Ed. We don't want... Fresh out of meeting with my uh, supervisor this morning, that was really cool. Um, I actually can't talk about what we were talking about in the meeting because the science is yet to be published, but genuinely some really exciting science. So cool. I just sorted myself out with some breakfast because that was the first thing meeting. Now heading back to the office uh, to upload a video and hopefully to try and understand this code, maybe, poss possibly. Please email me, Reading. Something that you only really learn from doing YouTube for a while is the importance of what's called metadata. So choosing your title, your description, but also your tags. Um, and it's definitely a part of the creative process that the more I've done, the more time I've put into it, because it makes a huge amount of difference uh, about how successful your video is. This stage now is normally my favourite part of the video making process, where you have just released it and you get floods of comments coming in. There's normally a hundred or a couple of hundred of comments. Um, interestingly, this time the comments have been fine, but according to live tracking websites, I'm actually losing subscribers today because of the video I posted. Well, I assume it's because of the video I posted. Um, interesting, really. Never had that happen before. Now I'm back in the music practice rooms to go over a couple of solo items, including the solo that I was given last night. Uh, we are doing, as part of service next week, these amazing things, um, the Jesuado Tenebre responses. And we did a service of Tenebre last year, and we're only doing one uh, this year in just a, in a service. Um, they're nuts. They're way, way ahead of their time. Um, and I've been given a solo in at the end of one of the movements, so guess what I'm doing this lunchtime? I just told you. Don't guess. If you do make YouTube videos, and then top tips for metadata are include in the top line of, or two lines of your description, like a kind of really succinct abstract of what the video is about. Two, have a short snappy title. I'll actually link to a song that's on Tom Scar's second channel about this that's um, different. Three, have a thumbnail that has nice high contrast, that's eye-catching, that's simple to read even when it's really small. And then four, have as many tags as possible that are relevant to the video. I mean like 20 or 30 tags, like the more the better, basically. This is all the kind of stuff that you pick up if you go to workshops run by YouTube or if you do a lot of digging online, but it is difficult when you're starting out as a creator and I've been doing this for so many years now that I kind of take all this stuff for granted so I hope that helped. I've not been filming very much today by the way because I'm conscious this vlog could be very long and also it hasn't been terribly interesting I've just been playing around with data the new data on my computer and rerunning old scripts. Now I'm gonna do a quick burst of food shopping before we go and see La 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 I, I mean Moonlight Dan, thoughts on Moonlight? Oh my god, okay, yeah, it's really, really, really good. Um, having seen La La Land... It's so Which I still haven't seen, seen yeah. Um, definitely deserved the best picture. It, well, it's not been overhyped, I no. can definitely say that. We shall have a big discussion about this soon. Yeah, if you'd like Dan and I to do a movie show, please comment that below, because we'd like nothing more than to do we that. We just leave an excuse, basically. We, we literally we do. Did. Liv, what was your review of Moonlight? So this Saturday, mum and dad have come down for a visit and we just had a quick 
uh, visit to Otterton Mill, which is a thousand year old mill where they still actually like make bread and stuff. But we were going to eat there, but it was too full. So what we're now doing is going on a walk, which has got some of the most spectacular views going down into Sidmouth. And hopefully we're going to fly there. So Dan and I have foolishly come on this walk with shoes with minimal grip. Oh. Um, we couldn't find our walking shoes and this is a steep muddy hill. We just turned the camera on because we assumed that one of us is going to go arse over tit. Whoa. These shadows. Oh. <laughs> like two old men that have just sorted themselves. <laughs> Bye Marshall. 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 Did I hear what? I just saw Dan and was like, Dr. Millings did I presume? Yeah. <laughs> oh God. What? What? So Sidmouth is just along the coast from us. Um, Exeter's not really on the coast, but we basically are. Whereas Sidmouth, that's the sea, right there. Um, this is actually a World Heritage Site, or the cliffs just up here are at least. Uh, it's known as the Jurassic Coast, because there's an awful lot of fossils from the Mesozoic era. Um, it's not just the Jurassic, Thank you, Dan. Keep that going. Uh, the Cretaceous and the Triassic. Um, in fact, Mary Anning, who's one of the most famous paleontologists in history, and sort of a great female scientist, did a lot of her work in Lyme Regis, which was just up the coast from here. Christopher Trotisan. Ah, you make me sick. At least I'm not putting on Instagram. It's I don't know if you can see this, but it's very strange weather here today in Sidmouth. It's really quite sunny, but it's also just sporadically bucketing it down with the rain. Welcome to England. We're even the sunny days are rainy. It's a lie, it's a Trump lie, it's all turned. It's, it's a fake news. <laughs> Dad's just pointed out this coffee shop actually predates coffee. This Sunday is one of those fantastic days where very rarely I actually don't have anything to do. Well, I don't have anything planned apart from a rehearsal this evening. I still have a lot of stuff to do. But I know this week's been a bit different on the blog because I've been like kind of doing each day as a, a set thing um, but it has been a busy week like there's been stuff going on throughout all the days so today is a very welcome real chill and I'm also gonna edit and do some evaluation uh, funnily enough as I talked about in my uh, m the last video that just came out I need to sit back and uh, draw up plans for how I'm gonna tackle everything Yeah. Uh -huh. 